Uh, well, when the history of the Ukraine war gets written, will events in the last 24 hours emerge as a turning point? America rejected a Polish plan that would have seen the US get involved in the transfer of fighter jets to Ukrainian pilots. For Washington, it was a step too far, a sign that they are fearful of overly antagonizing a nuclear armed uh, Russia. Let's talk to Major General Tim Cross, who's been a regular contributor to the show and reflects on some of the logistical problems that the Russian army have been facing that's been uh, stopping them uh, mounting an effective invasion to a great degree, but also uh, the, the broader picture in Ukraine and beyond. Uh, Tim Cross, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, what, what's caught your eye today? Is it Mariupol uh, down there? Is it what's happening elsewhere in the country? Is it, as I say, that uh, apparent refusal by the Americans to go along with the Polish plan. What should we pay particular heed to? Well, it's a, in a way, it's a mixture of all three, of course. Th th this whole uh, move seems to have stalled. Uh, we've said this for a while, but um, it's quite clear that they're not making the progress they wanted. So what's happening in the cities is clearly important. But I do think you're right in the context of the uh, what we were talking about the other day, that this idea of the Poles giving to the Ukrainian Air Force some of their old MiGs and them being replaced by American F-16s. To be honest, I'm not surprised the Americans have said this. I think we need to be, we collectively, including the media actually, need to be very clear that there is, a, obviously, this Ukrainian war is terrible, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But we need to be clear that there's a, a very strong line between this developing into a conflict between NATO and Russia. And aeroplanes are offensive weapons. This is not like giving anti-tank weapons or indeed anti-aircraft weapons to the Ukrainians. Um, aeroplanes are offensive weapons. And once you start giving offensive weapons, uh, then you're crossing a line. And I can understand why the Americans are very reluctant to do that. Uh, Tim Cross, as somebody who worked, as I say, in logistics, making sure that an army was fed and fueled and all the rest of it, could you just talk to us a little bit about the effects of a very cold temperatures? I mean, uh, stories today about some of the Russian tanks effectively acting as refrigerators in minus 20 conditions. How does fighting become difficult in temperatures that cold? Well, it, it, yeah, you're right. It does have a big impact. I mean, one of the issues that's undoubtedly the, the case is that a lot of these what we call B vehicles, the soft skin vehicles, have got relatively cheap tyres. Most of them, I have to say, from China and, and the cold weather and the um the age of those tires is beginning to have quite an impact so quite a lot of these lorries are breaking down cold weather of course means that people need more calories in order to stay you know relatively warm just as we would have want to have hot soup and hot food and so forth uh, i i've only ever served really in hot climates i've done a bit of work in, in cold climates but cold climates definitely you need more calories you need more food and then when you're in vehicles whether they're armored vehicles or soft skin vehicles they will people will keep their engines running even when they're static, in order to keep warm, as people would do in a traffic jam over here, or if they were stuck in the, in the hills in a, in a snowfall or whatever. So that means you're burning up fuel on a continuous basis. So you've got the issue of, of uh, burning through your combat supplies, your fuel, your fuel and your food. You've also got the issue of burning through um, things like tires uh, and, uh, and other material as well. So it's, and of course, movement is difficult too. I mean, it depends what's happening over there in terms of whether the, you know, the snow is building up, I don't think it is. Actually, I think probably what's going to happen more here is that the, the warmer weather will come in if they don't get a move on, and they're going to find themselves in, in slush and mud and so forth. Some of those famous pictures we saw uh, you know, in our war films from World War II, that will begin to hit. Tim Cross, I know you've hung on to talk to us, so we appreciate your patience and your expertise. Okay. Thanks ever so much, Tim Cross there. Um, okay. Let's just throw up, if we can, technology permitting, the live signal we've got from uh, Washington, I believe. Liz Truss, Foreign Secretary, will be speaking there imminently live and will bring uh, part of what she says at least to you. Um, Sarah Elliott's alongside me, American living in the UK. Uh, reflect, Sarah, if you can, on what Tim Cross was just saying there about what he clearly perceived to be an important moment, this idea that the Americans would not go along with this idea of nodding, approving the idea of MiG jets going to Ukraine with, with the Americans acting as a kind of intermediary. Yeah, I thought it was interesting how he differentiated between different material, uh, military equipment. So uh, anti-aircraft or anti-missile is, is kind of defensive and fine. But when it turns to a jet that's very offensive, that's very aggressive. And so it gives its signals to Russia an aggressive um, wanting to engage 
uh, kind of signal. And uh, I think, you know, again, I think the president has showed a lot of um, cautiousness and uh, prudency because the ramifications of engaging with a nuclear Russia, which, by the way, if you think back to 1939, they didn't have nuclear weapons at that time, but now we do, and all sorts of different types of bioweapons and um just really awful things that can destroy and ruin the world. So we, we don't want to have World War III and the end of the world. So we need that cautiousness. And um, I, I think that's good. And I think that keeps us an even keel. What I, what I find very fascinating is we're almost at two weeks now into this conflict and Russia hasn't taken over Kiev yet. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. And we thought that he would march in, stomp, you know, have Zelensky's head on a spike by now. And uh, the weather's getting warmer. The, the tanks are going to get stuck in the mud if they can even move. I mean, what Tim Cross said about the tires, about using the fuel to keep them warm in negative 20 degree temperatures, um, it's really quite something. And it's quite embarrassing to Putin. Yeah. I mean, it's well, let's hope it's sufficiently embarrassing that it allows others to loosen his grip on power. Wouldn't that be nice?